Hi team, so in this video we are looking at how to get organized and structure our requirements. I'll share with you my tips and best practices on how to elicit requirements and then organize them in epics, features and user stories. We will discuss three different scenarios of how to structure requirements. The first scenario will be about how to map existing requirements with categories into Epic's feature and user stories. The second one will be about requirements where all the categories are all over the place. And the third one is effectively not having requirements at all. And I'll walk you through my process how to elicit those requirements. And stay to the end of this video where I'll be sharing with you some additional tips and best practices on how I organize and structure my requirements. So before we look at structuring and organizing requirements, let's remind ourselves of what are the work item types you can find in Azure DevOps. So we're talking about user stories, features, and epics. I have a specific video that dives in details about what are epics, feature, and user stories. So look at my channel and you will find it there. But just as a quick reminder, a user story is typically, you know, a requirement written from the perspective of an end user, your feature is a categorization, capturing multiple user story within one feature. And then your epic is your large item, which uh, effectively categorize feature into logical groupings, right? So how do you go about mapping requirements into those three categories? So what we're going to cover is three different scenarios. So scenario number one is about um, the easiest one, right? You have received a list of requirements and those requirements are already categorized, right? Whether the client is using epics, features, user stories as a term, or maybe they use category, subcategory, and requirement line. It doesn't really matter how they call it, but effectively in this case, you should be able to easily map you the Excel sheet with your requirements into a structure in Azure DevOps using Epix feature user stories. You can adapt that structure, of course. So stay to the end where I'll be sharing some tips about how you can adapt that structure. Now, scenario number two is a little bit more complex. It's about the list of requirements that you have received from the clients. And either there is no categorization of those requirements or the category simply doesn't make sense, right? It happens that, you know, sometimes another BA or someone else worked on that list of requirements and they categorized based on previous experience that doesn't really make sense in a logical manner. So effectively what you can do then is kind of looking through the requirements, trying to map that out to a high level journey of your the project or the system you are implementing, right? So in the example I'm sharing with you here, we are, the example is about implementing a platform for higher education institution, an IT platform that will let the higher education institution man, manage students, applicants, admissions, you know, learning of the applicants and so forth. So reading through the requirements, you can kind of come up with that high level journey, end-to-end -end journey, which here I'm, I'm showing you on the screen. So that high level journey and the stages that, that for example, student or applicant goes through um, the, the system and interacting with the system, um, I would classify them as my epics, right? So those could be your epics. And then what you then end up doing is for each of those epics. So if you look now at student recruitment, you can define within student recruitment, what are the features that um, you know have been identified. So you look at your Excel sheet provided by your business or your client, and then you try to map the requirements, the individual line of requirements into those specific features. The features then um, fit into specific epics and so forth. And you effectively have to do that uh, for every single epics and every single feature going that mapping, right? So it's a bit of a, time consuming exercise, but it's quite important that you do it, especially at the beginning of the project where you can start your project with a correct structure and then um, it will pay off during the project, right? So scenario number three is about effectively not having requirements at all or very high level requirements, right? So what you end up doing in scenario number three is effectively you do exactly the same as with scenario number two, which is you go through epics, finding your epics, finding your features, and then you will have to do one step further is going and elicit with your stakeholders 
the different require line requirements or user story that would fit within each of those features, epics, and so forth, right? And once that's done, you can easily then import um, your Excel sheet or your backlog into Azure DevOps boards. I have another video covering how you can easily import uh, items into Azure DevOps board using the import CSV feature in Azure DevOps. And as promised, some bonus tips for the end. So when I implement uh, and uh, organize and structure requirements, right, what I try to do is use the terminology that the, my business or my end client is using, right? So let's say they came up with a list of requirements with a categorization that doesn't really make sense. Maybe some of the categories there can be reused or the language can be reused. Or if you come up with your own kind of categorization, try to reuse again the terms and the language that the end client is using. It will make it easier for them to adapt and understand how this, that new structure fits. Another one is review the priorities, right? So you are restructuring and reorganizing the requirements. So basically you have to make sure that the priorities defined at the beginning by your plan of business still make sense with your new structure. If there is no priority, that's easy. You can kind of reprioritize them with the business. If there are existing priorities, you have to make sure that the priority still makes sense for, you know, the user stories, features, epics, make sure that effectively some lower priorities um, are not required before some priority one items, right? Because effectively, if you have to deliver a priority one item that, re that is relevant to a priority three item, you will have to kind of change a little bit the reordering of the prioritization because that lower priority item is required before we can implement the priority one item. So keep that in mind. And the last one is adapt how you structure and organize your requirements. So I've walked you through, you know, the Epics feature user stories here, but you can add additional kind of categorization or you don't have to follow three categories. You can follow two categories if that makes more sense. So in Azure DevOps, you can easily adapt your structure and your requirements organization. So I have additional videos that cover this tip. So don't hesitate to look at this video to kind of structure your product backlog, how it makes sense to you. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more videos about Azure DevOps, more videos about Microsoft um, application concept and so forth. So see you in the next one. Bye.